Good morning, everybody. Well, it's not quite morning, it's mid-morning. Several of you guys expressed interest in seeing more information on this $500 power stroke, 7.3 power stroke that uh, I showed a couple videos ago. Well, we ended up with, well, we didn't end up with it. My buddy Chris ended up with it. And uh, I guess we're gonna go this morning and get it. Now, you're gonna see a lot, a lot of the truck on this channel because, you know, obviously all our buddies and everybody that have vehicles like this, we like to, you know, we like to work with them and play around with them. So I'll be helping him do a lot of the stuff that's to be done on it. And uh, so it'll be on the channel. But like I said, today we're gonna go get the thing. And I figured you guys might wanna, you know, might wanna tag along. It's a, you know, it's an adventure, right? So anyway, we have Freedom and the trailer all ready to go. So let's fire this thing up, get this show on the road. Let's do a nice cool start. We have made it over to the truck. Just a refresher. We've got to clean that bed out before we put it on the trailer. Because, oh wow. We have a tire that's completely and totally flat and won't hold air. Luckily, we brought a spare with us. And on top of that, we have a leak in the power steering hose. I don't know which power steering hose, but one of the power steering hoses we've got a leak on. So I guess we're going to get the hood open and assess that. We just happen to have brought a power steering hose. We hope it's the right one. We don't know. We're going to find that out. So uh, let's get underway with this bad boy. Actually, also, we got some batteries. That may be the first thing we do is stick some batteries on the thing so it'll actually crank. So let's go do that. Meanwhile, let's watch this man open this hood. Oh yeah, yeah, we're watching it. Come on, go, go, go. Doesn't help, the hood's been sitting there and it's hard to open. I had a miserable time with it myself. And I've opened one of these one time. The hose that's leaking is gonna be, I almost think it's the, I can't tell if it's the top or bottom one, so uh, we need to figure that out first and hope that the hose that is leaking is the hose we brought. If not, there's a auto parts store right beside us. So I guess we'll put some batteries on the thing and fire it up and see where it's leaking look at that sport the project time garage you can get those uh you can get those on my uh, teespring store by the way uh along with uh along with the uh, oh oh look more people look 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 gosh dog see that's the 7.3 shirt right there that's 7.3 truck right there that's 7.3 truck right there there's another one up there oh 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 that's 7.3 truck right up there that it's been on the channel many times. This has been on the channel many times. This one's going to be on the channel many times. Anyway, yeah, go out to my Teespring store. Get your official 7.3 shirt, and also there's some 6 0 shirts and 6 9 IDI shirts. Yeah, anyway, link down there in the description. Scroll down to the bottom of this video where all the words and hieroglyphics are, and you'll find a link there. So go check them out. Motocraft going back in this bad boy. Gonna try to figure out where this leak's coming from. So let's go ahead and do a, a cold start on it. See how uh, see how it runs. Not really a not really an ice cold start, but it's a cool start. It's cool here today. He thought he was gonna scare me. He didn't. Wow. It's gonna start. Good, starting way better anyway. You got uh, some power steering fluid to put in there to see if it's leaking because it's out. Completely out. I'm sure. Hang on, hang on for you. Got some in the, in the hang on for you, start. Let's just see if, when it starts. Let's see what does happen here. All right, fire it up.
Okay, so off. Nope, it's not the hose. I don't know, but it's pouring out above it. I mean, it is. There's two hoses there. There's no hoses. It was coming about that far above those hoses. Literally flipping, gushing. Yeah, I've seen the gush. I mean, it's gush almost like the reservoir. It's almost like it's coming out of the reservoir. I mean, flat flipping, oh, gushing. I think it's so. coming out right there. That fitting? Yep. Oh, well, that fitting is totally out. Yeah. It'll hurt. Clear. It's not even in there. It's wow. not even twisted in. Wow. Maybe that's all it is. <laughs> it's just a just a fitting loose. Okay, so as it stands right now, that little fitting right down there has popped out. I think it's a compression or a quick fitting of some sort. Anyway, you pop it back in and it pops itself back out. Easiest way I think to take care of this is gonna be pull all this junk here, pull the intake boot, and go ahead and get rid of this charge air pipe. And that will allow us to get a little easier access down there to it, rather than trying to be on the ground in the fender well. Basically, these right here are pretty easy to get out. They look like a lot, but they're not that hard. Once you get the, uh, once you get the lid off of it and the, uh, the filter out of it, you'll see these bolts here in the floor and on the fender. Once those pop out, the thing really just sets out as one big old piece and it opens it up a lot after it does that. So makes it a lot easier to work on. Seems terrible, it's not. You might find it easier if you unclip these clips right here and lift the whole lid up and then pull it, pull it out. Just be gentle with it, very gentle. Uh, this is one of those things, if you come into it with monster hands, everything plastic will break. Stuffy I'd say it is too. What is this thing on? That's just oh, a pre-filter. Mm -hmm. It's a rat. But yeah, and actually, if you want to keep that as one piece, you can just take this other, you can take this other one off right here and just, I can get used to this just filming while everybody else works. There. I'm going to expect royalties. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're about as royal as you're ever going to get. There it comes. Look at that. Now that gives you some room to work. Now that that's done, all we have to worry about is, oh, I prefer always, always, always on these tubes, these tubes are made of aluminum, and I prefer to always take them off at the intercooler side and not on the pipe side. I, I usually try not to disturb the, the clamps that are actually on the pipe. That It's such a thin wall that when you go to tighten them back, it's really easy to crush those pipes. So don't do it. Always take them off at the intercooler and at the spider up there. Take them off. Just grab a hold of it right there and start pulling. And then you'll just work it right out and it'll snake right up. This is pretty clean in there. Yeah, it is real clean in there. Yeah, right. It, oh, dude, it is. It's really clean in there, inside there. Yeah. Oh, look in there. There's oil in there. Oh, this truck ain't even ain't even blowing any oil at all by, is it? This truck's pretty damn clean on the inside, folks. All right, those I'm really surprised. Ah, oh, look, now we can see it. Yeah, that's the hose right there. See, the more y'all tear into it, the more the price is There's the hose right there that we're working <laughs> on. That's got to come out. Let's get that out. All right, hose is off. That's the end right there. That's the problem. And it looks to me just to, to be a push type fitting that's worn out. So it'll have to be, we'll have to see about getting that taken care of. So off to the auto parts store. Well, we went to Napa. $17,314.27 later and some Burger King. We have filters and oil and fluids and hoses, oh my. Good thing is though, um, Napa had the hose we needed in stock. So that's pretty good. Also, he, uh, he ordered uh, a hose for the truck that turns out to be the wrong hose. That'd be that hose here is the improper one that hose is the correct one but the best part about that is the incorrect hose is actually the other hose so it's pretty easy to 
it's pretty easy to change so we're going to just go ahead and change but well he's going to go ahead and change both of them i'm going to watch and get in his way uh status update both hoses are back on the truck reservoir is topped off boost tube is back in or cac tube charge air charge air charge air cac tube uh okay i guess the next thing we're going to do is stick the battery tray back in it and all that get that plumb back up we have a uh, gentleman on the other side of the truck over here who is putting a tire on there's the gentleman there's the tire the tires a donation from freedom one of the original tires that freedom had on it before i put those on it so that's where we are in the rain in the rain yeah i mentioned it's raining so uh get the battery tray back in it get the air hose all hooked up and it'll be time to start the thing and actually move it around get some of this trash out of the back of it load on the trailer and head home let's take it for a quick toot down the road see what it does I'm real curious this truck hasn't driven yet and i want to know if it shifts and if it works so let's do that is everything clear and out from around it are we good well let's see if it'll run Turn any of the heat on. Ooh, we got good brakes. Great brakes, in fact. Can I take that? Great brakes. Going in reverse, pretty good. Yep. Yeah, it's going to reverse straight now. It just got fluid in it. Did, we wouldn't try it. This truck runs great. This truck runs great. Shifts great. Doesn't smell great. You can smell smell dirty and nasty. Yeah. No black ice? Yes, black ice. Get, get on this stuff, see what we got. Yeah, I'd say it runs good, man. Shifting through all the gears like it's supposed to. Ooh, it's quiet, it's so quiet. It's She got some junk in her trunk. I'm gonna let the owner take care of that. Automatic transmission fluid. He's throwing funnels at me. Power steering fluid. Transmission fixing to fall apart as soon as I pick it up. Hell, this damn bucket's falling apart as soon as I pick it up. Time has come to load the thing up on the trailer, and uh, we we're going to see if it had four-wheel drive. Uh, we got one hub that's stuck, one hub that's not stuck. So he is over there beating and banging, doing it properly, trying to get the thing engaged. I don't know. We may need four-wheel drive to get up on these ramps. I don't know. It's raining out here. They're going to be slick, slick, slick. 
but uh, I don't know, we'll see. Well, we've made it home with the truck, and I didn't film any of it for whatever reason, but suffice it to say, it's here. Pretty uneventful trip overall. Uh, Freedom did just fine with, the, with it. Um, so, a few days have actually gone by, and we've had some time to kind of assess the truck a little bit and decide, you know, what it needs and start to lay out a game plan in what order um, it needs whatever it needs. We're going to start taking care of things here in uh, in order of um, most affecting drivability down to cosmetics in that kind of in that order uh, addressing the drivability problems first big deal is we want to be able to get it just safe enough and reliable enough to be able to drive down the road so we can hear things like the rear end and you know what does the transfer case sound like what are the front end suspension components like after you know 360 something thousand miles who knows if they've been replaced who knows if anything's been done to them i sure don't so let me show you uh let me kind of show you our plan of attack here starting with the steering column now we remember our steering column issue and it looks like that that whole bearing or whatever in there is just shot so it's going to need one of those Luckily, we've already been to a junkyard and we've already found a replacement column for the truck that hopefully we'll just swap right into it. Well, the next thing that we'll need to take care of is there are two oil leaks on the truck. One of them is a, it's, it's a pretty bad leak and it it's actually where the oil filter screws up and meets the house and it almost looks like they've left, uh, they, they accidentally stacked an O-ring on top of that thing or something. Maybe they didn't get the old O-ring off when they changed oil last or what. But that's where that's leaking. Um, the other thing is it's absolutely pouring out of the driver's side or out of the passenger side. And it's the good old fashioned 7.3 dipstick nut debacle. And somebody has epoxy that thing over and over it looks like. Eh, it looks like a train wreck under there. So we're gonna have to take care of that. Those two things would actually probably be in the next episode uh, of, of this, this series, uh, this, the steering column and the oil leaks. Also, we're gonna need a set of tires on the truck. It's gonna end up with probably 35 by 1450s on 20 inch wheels, pretty much like the last two, <laughs> two trucks you've seen on this channel. It's gonna kind of follow that motif. He doesn't wanna invest several thousand dollars in a set of wheels and tires with an unknown everything else, and I, I agree with him. He's gonna put just a set, a replacement set of tires like that on there. Some cheap ones, maybe even some used ones, I don't know, until we can decide what, we, what we're dealing with here. Put it on the road, drive it a few hundred miles or a thousand miles, start to shake it down a little bit. Probably a, a wise move. On the hubs, we know that, we know that uh, one lockout actually turns and works, but the other lockout on the passenger side is frozen. So it's gonna need a set of lockout hubs. Uh, under the hood, this little vacuum motor here, this little vacuum pump that supplies a uh, vacuum for the HVAC controls and such. It didn't work or doesn't work until you take a screwdriver and bang on it. Then it starts to work for a while and then it stops. You have to start all over again. 
have to replace that. Interestingly though, the air conditioning compressor, it started to work and it, it doesn't make any noise. It runs clean and runs quiet. The truck's full of uh, full of refrigerant still. I assume uh, maybe that's the factory load. I don't know. I haven't looked close enough to see if anything's been disturbed or not, but suffice to say it's, it's full of refrigerant and we didn't add any. So all that works. That's a good thing. We're going to have to take care of this headlight. Remember it had a big old spot broken out of it. So that'll have to get taken care of. I do have a set of headlights out of an 06 uh, style truck. 06 or 07. I don't know, maybe they're the same. But anyway, I believe they're 06, 06 headlights. We're probably just going to stick those in there because we have them on hand. And that's the way you do it. We know that those sway bar in link bushings down there are absolutely shot for sure. Not even any rubber left in them whatsoever. And I would imagine that the majority of the other uh, components under the front end uh, things like axle U-joints, axle shaft U-joints, driveline U-joints. What are the ball joints like? I have no idea. Um, what about the other bushes? What about the track bar bushing? Who knows? I haven't really looked that far into it yet. Those are not going to literally stop us from driving it up the road, but they may stop us from being from driving it regularly. So that's why we want to kind of do the big things first until we can get it on the road. As far as all the diesel things and maintenance items, that need to be done to the truck um, that we think need to be done to the truck we don't really know what's been done at what interval but we assume that it's going to need just about in everything so once the drivability is taken care of we're going to start taking care of small projects uh, lump projects like cooling system for example take care of belts hoses water pump thermostat that type stuff as a as a package flush it out clean it out taking care of things like injectors, glow plugs, the under valve cover wiring harness, the ICP, the IPR, the CPS, the ABC, the OU812, fuel bowl reseal, high pressure oil lines, because who knows what shape those are in, turbo uh, O-rings. Hell, it may end up needing a turbo. That's what happened with Freedom. If you watch that series at all, I drove that thing for, I don't know, 2,000 miles or maybe more, maybe 3,000 miles before the turbo finally started making noise, but it sat in a field for a long, long time. and. Well, barons don't like to sit. We'll take care of all of that kind of stuff too in lump projects. Those things that are almost like normal wear items on a 7.3, especially at this kind of mileage. All of those little things will all get done on the truck too uh, on this channel. I'll update you guys with different videos as we do them. As far as um, beautification goes, I believe he's planning on getting a replacement side door for it. Um, we'll have to do something about that cab corner it's pushed in pretty good uh, right here um eh, bedside i'm not sure how i would worry about it if it were mine but that's up to him um on the inside it really just needs it needs a really good cleaning because really it's not in bad bad shape or it's not even in bad shape it's actually in pretty decent shape we need to take care of these seats i don't know what he's going to do about that he may end up having them recovered Replacement set of speakers going to going to go in it at some point. I'm sure um, Back there in the back. You can see a bunch of stuff. He's already got for the truck uh, There's all the autometer gauges the oil changes the gauge pod um, Filters fluids that type stuff. We'll do a, a transmission flush uh, On it. So uh, there's a lot of stuff to do on the truck. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff It's been sitting for years and years and um, We're gonna bring it back to life so stay tuned for way more content on this truck on this channel tons of projects coming uh, appreciate you watching guys don't forget to like share subscribe tell all your friends about us and guys i'll see you next time